American General Pictures imprisons you in a bloody web of terror. Spider Baby has the seductive innocence of Lolita and the savage hunger of a black widow. Spider Baby will give you nightmares forever. No man that loves her lives to love another. Her sweet kisses engulf you in a bloody web of horror. Welcome to the latest episode of the podcast that wouldn't die. I'm your host, Kevin. With me, as always, is Aaron. What up, what up? Wouldn't this Spider week... Baby be the best name for a punk rock band, like a girl's punk rock thrasher band? Or the Spider Babies. Is that better than Cannibal Holocaust? That's pretty good, too. <laughs> But that, that seems hard. more like a that seems more like a guy band. But Spider Babies, yeah. Oh, that's true. That's a good point. Um. Anyway, that'll be, this that'll week... be your you and Shoney. That'll be your band. Why is it me and Shoney? First of all. <laughs> anyway, people listening have no <laughs> idea what we're talking about. Anyway, this week we'll be discussing the horror classic. Spider Baby, starring Lon Chaney Jr. And uh, Sid Haig. Sid Haig is in this as well. So that's an all-star cast, as you can see. Good times. Each week (laughs) on the podcast, we discuss guilty pleasures and forgotten classics of the horror and sci-fi genres with a comedic twist. I think this fits all the categories. It's a a Freud... Freudian Freud, it is a forgotten classic. It is, uh, it's got it all. It could be it's a Broadway a musical. It's, it's a, a shameful, it's a shameful joy. It is true. <laughs> Ain't no lie. Ain't no lie. Good time. Bye, bye, bye. Now, what is up with you? <laughs> I'm exhausted. I'm just exhausted i had a child argue with me about the baba duke and what the monster represents that was my last 20 minutes of class so failed him <laughs> failed him <laughs> that was it i'm like you son of a go to the dean's office that's it you're out of here expulsion <laughs> expulsion this person was like uh the baba duke is a holiday classic in my mind what holiday christmas Watches the Babadook Duke Christmas. is a Christmas. <laughs> oh, sweet Jesus. That's something. That's how we, that's how we roll when we're hanging with Miss D. <laughs> clearly. Clearly. <laughs> we got we have to in the uh risk of full disclosure, we have to say we watched this movie uh in the days, what was it, before Thanksgiving or was it right after Thanksgiving? I'm trying to remember. Yes. Right before. I have ha- I did have a couple of drinks and then uh I think I stayed awake or maybe I passed out once or twice. And we didn't take notes cuz we didn't think we were going to do it for the show. But so now we're just doing it, you know, cold and, and letting the the chips fall where they may, basically. We're cold chicken winging it. But once we watched it, I mean it's it's a classic. I mean honest to, to jesus what my what fevered mind created this now here's my my off topic please there's a there's a burlesque show in la um about star wars have you seen that there's a giant job of the hut and it's the dancers and everything there's a whole burlesque show. it's just been extended now no, what? I have not seen that. okay well i will i will perhaps you're on the interweb i will forward that to you but I was thinking now, how could we turn this once again? Doesn't have to be. I'm mixing it up. Doesn't have to be a drag queen musical, but it could be a burlesque show, The Spider Baby. I mean, it, it seems to lend itself to the genre. So who's to say? I mean, it's, you have so much you can work with. You do. It starts off. You're thinking you're watching Freaks again, and then yes. no, no, it looks like something with the Manson family. Well, you could be right to all of these things. <laughs> It's some from column A, some from column B. Absolutely. It's fantastic. Fantastic. So give us your 30-second synopsis of Spider Baby. So it is not what I thought. I thought it was going to be a uh, half-human, half-spider. It's like the... Help me, help like the fly. Me. If the fly had a baby with a spider, that's what I thought it would be. That's a real Hatfields and McCoy, the, the fly and the spider mating. 
One might say a Romeo and Juliet. Yes, one one <laughs> might. <laughs> but that's not what it is. So, boom. There's a, a bunch of people with apparently some genetic uh, abnormality that causes them in, to regress into some kind of homicidal maniacs. Uh, and they're a little simple at the same time, and they can only be cared for in a, in a ramshackle Victorian somewhere in the suburbs of Los Angeles by the kindly chauffeur who shows more patience than uh, any special education teacher I've known in my entire life. Uh, yeah. high, hijinks ensue. It ain't going to work out. Well, I have to say, I've been to some uh, special day classes, and you don't typically see murder and mayhem occur in those classes. Not typically, I would Not say. Not typically. <laughs> but maybe, is that because of the teacher? Like, if, if it was just Lord of the Flies? If it was Scientology, oh, and no. you just threw the kids in the mix with kids raising kids, like a like, uh, uh, Ukrainian orphanage back in the day. Maybe. Who's to say what would happen then? So now, okay. When had you even heard of this movie, Aaron? Because this was your idea. All right. Damn it. You know, every year I try to go to the Halloween pub quiz at our Tiki bar. And Lord knows there's always a spider baby question. And every year I say, God damn it. Okay, I've been to two, and twice there's been a spider baby question. That's two for two. Okay. Good Two for two. And I really thought it was a more current film, because it's a lot of young folks that were going, Spider Baby! And I was like, oh my, maybe this is the new Eli Roth film, perhaps. You know the kids (laughs) these days. But now, watch it with you. Clearly it was not. I had never freaking heard of it. And and it's surprising because it's a fantastic name. I'm trying to think. I had definitely heard of it, but I knew very little about it. And I don't know how I heard of it, frankly. I don't know if Joe Bob mentioned it or if it was in some book that I read, like the craziest horror movies that you've ever seen. I don't recall. But this was definitely my first viewing. And it was... <laughs> I have, okay, I have to be honest. Initially, when we started watching it, I'm like, I don't know how long we're going to watch this. We may get 15 minutes in and decide enough's enough. Uh, and yet, we did, we did not. We just kept watching it. <laughs> yes. and, and, and I don't know. I have almost a fond feeling about it. It's very, it's so bizarre. Yes. It there were some fevered minds, maybe some early early cocaine use here in the late sixties. Some laudanum. Uh, some oh, some laudanum. It's not the eighteen sixties. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But definitely some uh, Manson inspired homemade LSD or something going on here. We have to jump right in because the whole premise is is freaking bonkers. Because it starts, there's like a framing story of one of the main characters telling the story of the the Mary family and how they have the affliction, like you mentioned, where it's like uh, at adolescence, they start regressing back through childhood and eventually... <laughs> At least, I don't know, mentally? Is that what we're supposed to think? Mentally, they're regressing? But it's worse than that. It's Benjamin Buttons if, like, three quarters of the way you also become, like, a berserker. Well, and that was the other thing about it. Because there's a, there's a maniac part. It's just you don't regress to a fetus, poop yourself, and then you're in, with Jesus in heaven. This is the thing where it was kind of making no sense. So you regress, but what he says, like, what happens is eventually you regress to like prenatal where you're like, oh, you know, it's altered state stuff. Then you become like a Uga, uh, 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 like a, some kind of caveman <laughs> and, and you're, you're running through the university, bopping people on the head with old dinosaur bones. Yes. William Hurt turns into a monkey man. Uh, <laughs> no, but it, it's something like you become mentally like an amoeba or something. So you have no compunctions to just c- committing cannibalism. Cannibalism right, I mean, on the menu. And there really wasn't any cannibalism. Well, there kind of was later in the movie. 
Okay, it might have been the part I fell asleep. But it but the interesting thing is, unlike the bad seed, which also has maniac a maniac child. Yes. In the bad seed, Rhoda knows what she's doing. You know what I mean? These people have a cognitive issue at this point. It seems like it, but I mean, again, typically, not a, not a rule, more of a guideline. Children are not committing mass murder, right? But these are not real. These are adult ba- adult babies. Versus Rhoda from the Bad Seed, it was calculated. Yes. There was a plan. There was a reason. Yes, Rhoda and was like she a serial knew killer, damn well. Basically, Rhoda was a serial, was a sociopath, but knew enough that if she was caught, bad things were going to happen. To right. Her. She she and, had, had hit no evidence. Com- right. And, and hit evidence and took care of witnesses. <laughs> yeah, she was. The, Rhoda was no joke. Rhoda, Rhoda was no joke. Rhoda would come over to the Mary family and there'd be nothing left and Rhoda would be skipping down the street wearing their jewelry and their tap shoes laughing to herself. That's correct. Now, let me say this. Rhoda's not a name you hear a whole lot these days. I gotta be honest. It it is a name of the past because there was the old 70s series Rhoda. Yes, starring Valerie Harper. It was a spinoff of the Mary Tyler Moore show, which had multiple spinoffs, by the way. Do you know all the spinoffs Indeed. of Mary Tyler Moore? Uh, is Maud or was that all in the family? That was all in the family. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm already I'm already wrong. Okay, Rhoda was Mary Tyler Moore's good friend, best friend. Rhoda Morgan, her hippie Spurt. friend, her hippie right. friend. Her, she's a little looser. She smoked a little MJ. She slept around. She slept. Around. So she got her own uh, spinoff. Then Phyllis got her own spinoff. There's a show called Phyllis. Starring I miss that. Cloris Leachman. We, we okay. love Cloris Le- Cl- Leachman, though. Absolutely. And then there was also Lou Grant. Or was Ed Asner oh. got a spinoff. But it was a bizarre, like, you know, going from a comedy show spinoff, but the spinoff's a drama. Like Trapper let's John be MD. Straight. Ed Asner was scary. Absolutely. He's, There's not a lot of jokes. He's gonna about yell that. at you and I'm gonna cry like Mary Morgan or Mary, what was her last name? Morgan Stern? No, that was Rhoda. Rhoda Morgan oh, Stern. What was what was Mary? Tyler Moore. Mary Mary Richards? Richards. Yes. That's right. Okay, I want the world to know that I have never watched a single episode of the Mary Tyler Moore show. I have no, I've never seen it. I know very little about it, but I can tell you all the spin-offs of Mary Tyler Moore. So I have, go. in fact, seen the Mary Tyler Moore show, but what is it? That, there, I've never seen the Dick Van Dyke show because it always looked stupid. Right. It was no Lucy. I, I, you want to think that all of these shows from a certain era were genius and they were not. Only Lucy survives. Well, Dick Van Dyke became a well-known person because of the Dick Van Dyke show. And he wasn't the original I choice. Don't... Did you know? We're talking hey, about Dick this. Van Dyke... Only exists because he was in. You mean Mary Poppins? Right. That's the only thing I know that he ever did that was worth my time. Not diagnosis murder? Tell me something up. No. (laughs) I know. Step in time, step in time, step in time, step in time. What about Chitty Chitty (laughs) Big Bang? Okay, take that back. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang too. But he was definitely still better in Mary Poppins. Okay. Good times. Good times. We're going all I'm over glad, the map. I'm glad you agree. Because we're frightened. We don't know how to get started with the spider babies. And and and, and Sid Haig living in a dumb waiter. Ah! <laughs> okay. So let's let's the, the... Sometimes, you know, when there's a spider in the room, you kinda kinda walk around, you kinda look at all your options. That's what we're doing now. Before we, we 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 get the courage up to jump in and and go to battle. This is usually about the time that people fast forward our podcast. We're <laughs> like, let's. There's just, no such thing. I don't want to hear no this. Such, this is not like a YouTube video on how do I change the battery of my ring, and they fast forward to the beginning. Ours is like you've gone to a four star restaurant, and each course is just you know wrapping itself around you there's no fast forward come on man you luxuriate 
If we if we like to think that they luxuriate. It's more like they go to a five-star restaurant expecting filet mignon, pheasant under glass, and instead people are throwing buckets of slime on them. That's the sad we say, reality. Would you like a mint? It is vapor thin. Sweet Jesus. Okay, Aaron, why don't I throw it to you? What are your thoughts and feelings on Spider Baby? What you got? What the hell's wrong with Sid Hag? Does he have some? Was he in Freaks? No, he's not that old. He was he was young-ish when Spider Baby Spider Baby was filmed in 1964. Was not released until 1967. So Sid Haig is still hanging around. He's he was a young person back then, and this is the whole other issue. So well, so was Charlie Manson. That is true. Also, still he's dead now, right? Charles Manson. He just died. A couple of yes, years ago. he just did. By the way, Sid Haig is also dead. He just died. He did just die. 2019. Um, but what I was going to say is, so, okay, so this, uh, this issue only affects this one family, right? But then it comes back to how do they procreate? How are they having children, right? If, Hills if, have eyes, brother. Hills have it, mother f***ing eyes. So you think... That this is some kind of it's weird like, incest thing. I think it's like the Habsburgs. <laughs> That's a deep pull. That's a deep pull. The, the you got it. The blood. The, the Medici's. Uh, you, you do not taint the blood. The Marys the blood do not tainted. taint the blood. The blood is tainted. Exactly. Well, because and that's the thing. So Sid Hag is the oldest sibling, right? Who it basically <laughs> he wears a diaper, flops around, doesn't really speak, but is down for rape. He is down for. We rape. don't even know. We don't even know. We assume he is down for rape, but uh, rapey McRape victim appeared to be fully clothed, so it could be just a horrible grinding freak out. So Sometimes. I don't know. It apparently was so terrible. The chick lost her freak. She was fully clothed and it was enough to make her lose her mind. But look at these later pictures of Sid Haig. I'm, I guess I, I understand. That, that, would, that would do it. That would send you right over the falls, basically. Oh, I had no idea it was it was the mofo from uh, House of a Thousand Corpses. So, boom. It's God, all clear House now. House of a Thousand Corpses. Did we see that together, Aaron? House of a Thousand Corpses. We must have. No, because it, it, it cannot be. It cannot be. Because I have a rule against crazy, raw, motherfucking zombie. It was enough that we saw him at that Fangoria thing. That was only to see Karen Black. I feel like... We, did, we must... I feel like we did see it together after Fangoria. Right. I, I don't think we always had negative feelings about Rob Zombie's movies. Because I think that was his first, if I'm not totally losing my mind. And that's when we were like, oh, okay, he sucks. Oh, yeah. That's what we, we weren't <laughs> big fans of the music. He did have a rock and roll name. And then we're like, oh, Karen Black. And then we thought, poor Karen Black. Poor K Karen. <laughs> what, what's become of you? Um, she she was in uh, Body and f Mother f Clyde. That's gonna be my my trade line for uh, what? Tonight. Everything's That's gonna like be your mother fourth f bomb. Yeah, uh, it wasn't just time. a f. I'm saying mother f. Okay, so See. now we're up to six. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, so just to clarify, I, I want to go over what the swears will be for the evening. Please do. I'm trying to keep the train on the tracks here, and it's you know it's a losing proposition. It's flipped over. The caboose is on fire. It's like that scene from Swarm, where the bees attack <laughs> the uh, train, causing a derailment. Yes, not a joke. Do you want, would you like to talk more about uh, Rob Zombie? I'd rather not. So <laughs> there are the three kids. The youngest one is the one called Spider Baby, who plays this game where she traps people and like they're stuck in her web and then she stabs them to death. Now she, she has like some crazy crocheted Afghan with holes in it that she throws. And then the, while they're like, crazy lady, why are you throwing this on me? And then she comes out with two butcher knives and goes whack, whack. Which was shocking. So so a dude at the beginning yeah. of the movie, like a, a messenger, is delivering a letter. And he climbs 
Half climbs in the window because no one's answering the door. The window slams shut on him, trapping him. And at that point, she throws she throws the Afghan <laughs> rug on him and then attacks him with and chops his ear off. His ear falls on the floor, which she keeps as a souvenir. What happens oh to his God. body? Mary, Dave, do you think that's why David Lynch always has a severed ear yes. in his shows? I, because of Spider Baby. Because of Spider Baby, absolutely. <laughs> now there are times where they get rid of the body by tossing it. They they take the body down into the cellar where Uncle Joe and Aunt I don't remember what their names are. I'm just making this up. Their uncle, mommy, aunt, daddy. <laughs> Pretty much. It's like a VC Andrews novel. They take, <laughs> they take, and they roll the corpse into a hole uh, in the ground, basically a pit where the the older members of the family reside, who are just, I don't know, feral freaks now. They're feral freaks. All they do is is stand in the hole with their arms out, yelling. Right. So they, and I guess they toss the corpse in there, and they that's dinner, I guess, for Aunt that's Fanny right. and Uncle Leroy. So I think there were some references that Sid Haig was uh, was uh, due in the pit next. He was next he was on, on his way. Yes. He was he had a one way ticket to the pit. But again, it's a hole in the ground where they just live. It's what is it like a? It, a it is the room? most elaborate basement. It's second only to the Silence of the Lambs basement, which was like a whole underground world. Absolutely, no question. I mean, basically, it was it was a case of it puts the lotion in the basket is what we're talking about. That's what I'm saying. That was the biggest, most bizarre basement I ever saw. It was a whole subterranean world with separate doors and a well and. Right. Why did he live underground when there was a whole house upstairs? That was very confusing. He liked the dank. So there's Spider Baby, then there's the another sister who seems to be less crazy, but when when push comes to shove, she also throws some crazy around. So See, they're all crazy, but only Spider Baby is is homicidal. She's homicidal. Uh Big Brother Sid Hag is a serial rapist. Rapicidal? Rape yeah, maybe, maybe that you gotta pass it on. It's like uh, what what was the movie we just watched? You gotta pass it on. Absolutely, it follows. No Sid Hag follows. So this, so they're basically taken care of by the chauffeur of the former owner of the house who has died. That's Lon Chaney Jr. He's the chauffeur. He's just a dude. He's an. This is this is late model Lon Chaney because remember. The Wolf Man was like in the in the early fifties, if I'm remembering. And he's billed as Lon Chaney, not as Lon Chaney Jr. Right. I thought that was very weird. I wonder why I was they like, did that. Mm, I, th- I don't know because at first I was like, Lon Chaney was surely Lon. I, I mean, Don Chaney was silent films. Yes. Lon, Lon Chaney, Chaney was the fan of the Oscar in silent. Yes. Yeah, senior was in the silent era. So I can't imagine he was kicking it with the Manson girls over at Spider Babyville. No, <laughs> he wasn't. Well, I was waiting to see. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> Lon Chaney, I mean, this is not a here or there, but I remember there was an episode of The Monkees where Lon Chaney was in it, not doing any Wolfman stuff, just being an actor. He was like, the Monkees were trying to set up an old woman who they befriended that episode with the old with an old man that they befriended, and then sparks. Well, fly. I thought you meant set her set her up to steal her money. I was like, oh, that's a dark side of the monkeys I haven't seen. <laughs> no, set like a relation. <laughs> it was probably Michael Nesmith coming up with that. Yeah, Peter Torx. <laughs> or- Peter Torx's idea was to rip off the social security of the old woman, but the Wolfman came to save the day and defeated the evil monkeys. I don't. <laughs> Definitely would tune in for that, no question. Um, so he, Same time. he's been taking care of them uh, ostensibly, but then the, um, the messenger arrives with a letter where it's basically like some distant cousins are on the way over to basically claim their inheritance, which makes no right. sense because you know, here are three children of the former owner of the property who are still alive. So, I mean, I don't know yeah, how I puzzled that. 
So I puzzled that, I puzzled that, because while they are children, they are clearly adults. So the only thing would be, I mean, did, did they not know about the children? Clearly they did when they arrived. Well, but then who contacted them? Who asked the cousins to come down and claim their inheritance? Because they somehow right. got out of because, it. Right, because I mean, we discover that their father is a skeleton in the bed upstairs. So it didn't look like there was a proper funeral. So who even knows he's dead? Right. And uh, and he had a will? <laughs> well, and why wasn't the dad tossed in the pit when he became a, a crazy freak? Why is he just, did he just drop dead? Why didn't the dad, where's mom? Did they already eat mom? Yep. And who's uh, doing all this paperwork? Yeah, who's alerting outside authorities? Not the revenuer man or something right. like you got a spill and this is the Dukes of Hazard. Who is alerting the authorities? So that was a little strange. I was like, well, maybe father has died recently. That was before we saw the, the skeleton in corpse. bed. His mama His desiccated by. corpse. So I, I figured this young couple's coming to raise all the, the Idjit family. Well, and that's the thing. And they're basically like, we need to ship these guys off to a sanitarium. Rightly so. Because they're yes. homicidal. <laughs> they're not only homicidal freaks, but they're like clearly unable to take care of themselves. No question. And clearly Lon Chaney Jr. is doing a terrible job. Just poor. Clearly he loves them and would like to take care of them, but helping them is not just getting rid of the bodies and, and say, oh no, I still love you. Yes. He's going to hate you. He's going to hate you and turn you away. It's no, true. no, no, no. Well, it's something like he made a promise to the father before the father <laughs> shriveled up to and died care of to take care of the children. Right. But the thing about it is, sorry, the chauffeur really has no legal rights here. He was not he's not their legal guardian. He's just doing them a favor, I guess. So if the if the cousins come in, theoretically, they should just be able to ship the kids off. But they would have to go to court. Where I'm not a lawyer, but they'd have to go to court and, and actually get control of the children. And then I guess they'd I be mean, the executors of the estate at that point. I don't know. I mean, if they're inheriting everything, or are they just saying that some government agency said that this is the next uh, kin? Maybe it's presumed that the aunts and uncles downstairs are gone right. or dead. Because they're in a pit. Dad is dead. So now who's going to raise the minor children? I, I, I guess we're assuming they're minors. So then they had to figure it out. So child services did a magic search. It's 1960. Yes. Did, so did they write a lot of letters and then found these crazy cousins? Right. It's hard to know how old they're supposed to be because... They are, they're not little kids, obviously, but they act like they're little kids. So it's possible Sid Hag is 30. You know, the older sister could be 25 and the younger sister could be 20. Who knows? It's impossible. I think age. they're, I got the vibe that they are supposed to be like teenagers. Who the hell knows? Again, Sid Hag is wearing a diaper. So who knows what, what the hell is happening? It, it, so, it makes no sense. A spider baby lives like a spider. When they all sit down, so it's the the, the cousins arrive. Um, their lawyer, Mister Schlocker, and Mister Schlocker's assistant are all there to find out what the hell's going on. Now, ostensibly, the only reason they care is that this, uh, you know, there's a huge inheritance. Like, there's money to be had. This is a huge mansion, even though it's like the Munsters live there. Right. Right. It's ramshackle. Uh, oh, my God. It's, it is it is high school quality set design. Correct. Correct. So it is a mess. It's a mess. So they're sitting down to eat. And Lon Chaney Jr. is like, oh, OK, you know, we're going to we're going to have a nice feast. And I guess he was kind of trying to coach the kids up to not appear quite so psychotic. You know, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Um, maintain dudes don't kill anybody but first of all the and then it was like the very sketchy we have a very different diet than everybody else so what what was in the, the salad was, was like some hay that you would 
It was like lob clip. It was, spot, it was crab grass and Timothy Hay. Yes. Uh, where you try to scoop it with the salad tongs, but it all just comes out because it's just a flake of hay. Yes. Well, it's like... <laughs> It's like sod that you got from Lowe's or something. It's like, uh, I mean, this. <laughs> and at one point, I guess at, Spider Baby's eating like bugs on her and just mud and slop. At, at one point, Spider Baby's eating spiders. Yes. She can't decide. So this is that's the cannibalism, I guess, if she's there a spider. Is. So she can't decide if she is a spider, is a friend of the spider, or is just going to eat a bowl of spiders. She can't decide. Oh, but she's able. not sharing her bowl. Well, she offers and some to the, the cousin, and he, he like reaches for it, and she's like, uh, "I don't think you want that, bro." Yeah, <laughs> it's like thanks, but no thanks. Have some more of the sod. Well, the- and what else did they have? Some toadstools from the garden. Yes. And what else? Uh, the cat that Sid Hag. Oh, the cat <laughs> grabs. <laughs> Yes. He's allowed to keep whatever he catches. That's not a good philosophy, by the way, especially because he did catch that lady later he on. He catches the lady. So... Well, and that was the thing. It was kind of like the one male cousin whose name uh, I could look up, but I'm not going to, seemed like he was game. He's like, hey, whatever, you know, thanks for having us. I will eat this crab grass and the slop because that's just the kind of guy. And and his sister is portrayed as like the shrew because she's sitting down at the table Honestly, and is mortified. I, I thought they were a couple at first. At first, yes. And then he was like he was like a sweetheart or simple. I couldn't figure it right. out. But he was so kind and gentle to them and nothing phased him until Spider Babe started grinding him. <laughs> And then he was like, I feel a little uncomfortable, (laughs) little girl. Well, and that's, we kind of Uh, talked about this. It's that thing where it's like, he's supposed to be the good guy. So he's like, oh, everything's cool. Oh, no, no, no. They're just being friendly, blah, blah, blah. Where it's like a reasonable person would be like, this is bizarre. This is I feel scared. I'm going to sleep in the car. Help me. Yeah. Then there's his freaky sister who is yes. modeling strange lingerie in front of an open window for no apparent reason. Is she trying to seduce her crazy brother or what is that? Who is she that trying to the- Why is she walking around in sheer uh, nightgowns and stuff? It was so bizarre. Okay, so after dinner, the lawyer and the sister say, we're going to stay here because even though this is a mansion, there's only two available rooms. So the brother and the assistant have to go into town and get a hotel room or rooms, I guess. So she's in her room getting ready for the night to go to bed. And she literally is putting on garter straps. She's like putting on like a gossamer negligee. And it's just like, what are you doing? What do you think is happening? Why would you pack that to go see yes. this house you're inheriting and, and the the idgies that are living in there? Yes. Not, not to be disrespectful, but this is uh, some Hills of Eyes shit. This isn't like real people. It, it's ridiculous. It, it's so, and she's putting it on and you see her posing. And again, there's no one else in this room. Except the, <laughs> there's a big picture window there. She's posing, posing. They cut to another scene for, I swear to God, 15 minutes. Cut back to her. She's still posing, posing. You're like, what is what is the purpose of this scene? Basically, I'll tell you what the purpose was. She she was pretty hot. I didn't realize how attractive she was. It's just she was dancing around in her negligee. I'm like, okay. And it was oh, old school, like 50s, 60s, where it's just sheer. There's just nothing else going on. But nothing good look, else. But she, you knew she was evil because her negligee was black. That's a sign. We learned that from Psycho. That is correct. Well, you knew she was evil because she sat well, down. She's a bitch. A freak, and she was a bitch. <laughs> but, but again, her reaction. See, I, I guess, you know, if you sit down to that table and you see how they live, maybe you think the things she's saying, but maybe you don't say them out loud. Out loud. Maybe. Well, better yet, you walk into this house and don't insist on spending the night there. I'd be like. I'm going to drive not two hours right to the next town, two hours to the next town, whatever it takes. I'm not staying right. here. I'm not eating with these people. This is all bad. And it's all, I don't need to be here. Just Absolutely let me sign whatever not. I need to sign. 
I'm mail not me the contract. This, yeah, right. mail me the contract. I'm not going to live in this derelict uh, freaking uh, house. It's fall- not like a good, it's not like the Munsters where at least it's awesome. No, it just looks like trash with garbage everywhere. Absolutely. And it, it is literally a crack den. A crack den out in the sticks. But, you yeah. know, there, you don't no see any town. All the grass is dead, so that's how you know it's Southern California in the spring or summertime. <laughs> right. It's basically the house from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, if you haven't seen that, where it's like, this place is way too big. Like, it's it's literally a mansion, but then when you walk inside, you're like, oh, I see. It's it's a total shit show. Yeah. I'm out. I'm pass. Out. Pass. Hard pass. Hard pass. But, now, but 100%, is- everyone needs to be in an institution, even if it's a bad one, because right now... They are not, it's not good for themselves, not not good for anyone else. Well, this is 1964, so all the institutions are one floor over the cuckoo's nest. <laughs> but for these kids, I'm That's saying... That's an upgrade. That's an upgrade for these kids. No question. Where do I sign? Where do I sign? They're at I'm least shipping someone, them off. At least someone will be there to take the steak knives away. Oh, no question. Look, <laughs> full frontal lobotomy, Perfect. Electroshock treatment, absolutely. Keep them coming. Whatever you got to do, because these are bizarro freaks. I'm just saying, at least someone will have the butcher knives. (laughs) And it won't be them. Yeah. When Scatman Crothers arrives to deliver a letter, he will at least survive that encounter going forward if these kids are in the institution. That's all I'm saying. (laughs) That dude, I hope you have something behind the scenes because that dude really did look familiar. It was not Scatman Crothers, but it looked <laughs> like somebody from like the 40s or the 50s that I may have right. recognized. So the lawyer Schlocker, who I swear to God, it was like, why does he have a Hitler mustache and a Hitler hairstyle? It because he was bringing it back. I, is it a Hitler or is it a Mo? <laughs> Mo first okay, first of all, Mo did not have a little Hitler mustache, except when he was trying to be Hitler. Or was that Charlie <laughs> Chaplin? Who could say? Well, Charlie Chaplin did have a little Hitler, so apparently it was a a, th- a, a choice. It was a thing. It was sweep of the nation. Uh-huh. Um, so he is is literally wandering through the house in the middle of the night, I don't know, looking for like riches or you know fine china or the silverware i don't know what he was doing i don't know what the hell they were thinking but he finds his way down into the cellar because that's what you do when you're in a haunted mansion at midnight is go like i'm going down to the cellar by myself i have never lived in a house with a cellar and it is terrifying to me i don't know Just how people have cellars i don't know how people have cellars i'm not doing it not doing it and that's he (laughs) he almost falls in the pit like the hands reach out and try to grab at him and he is set upon by spider baby and her older sister and they they murder him at this point and lon cheney jr doing a piss poor job of keeping these kids in control basically at some point after a few more murders he's like oh we can't cover this up anymore. I guess I'm going to get a couple of sticks of dynamite and just blow us all up. Mm-hmm. That's the only. <laughs> Why didn't you do that before, Lon? I mean, clearly this is a this is an untenable situation. Let's get some sticks of dynamites before a few more of the murders occur. That's all I'm saying. Why is that a choice? I I I I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Well, what is it? It's there is He's some only, I think. I think he's only one level ahead. I'm sure they're building a highway or something. So they're blowing through the mountain. Right. There's there's some construction going on. And evidently, they just leave the dynamite just out on the, by the side of the road. With a sign that says, free, take as much as you want. That's essentially. right. <laughs> right? So. And it's not like the cartoons where you just take a lighter. I mean, when they use dynamite, they use these electric stuff. I mean, I don't know what they're doing in 64. Like, like I know what the <laughs> fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> I just assume it's not like, you know, uh, the Roadrunner and Coyote. <laughs> it's the Acme Dynamite Company. Exactly. So that's where you get it. Everything's from Acme. <laughs> um, if I ever have a corporation, that I'm, it's got to be Acme. 
Oh dear. It makes no sense. I think I heard Spider Baby coming over <laughs> the Alexa. Spider Baby's on, is on the case. Let me tell you what. No, so the, <laughs> so there are multiple murders. So the grand the grand reveal at the end of the movie is Anne is about to be killed by the sisters and and Sid down in the the basement. Uh, the brother is about to be killed by Spider Baby because he's tied to a chair and is like starting to realize, oh damn, we're not just playing a game where you tie me to a chair and that's all fun and games. You're literally going to stab me with some butcher knives. I thought it was Jade. I didn't know what was going on. It was, there, there... <laughs> it was Jade with <laughs> Chaz Palminteri and Dave Caruso. Yes, <laughs> that's exactly what it was. Yeah, uh, he's okay. like, la, 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 la. It looks like some Adams Family biz where all of a sudden, like, wait a minute, the house is now on fire and I'm tied to the chair. Yes. Oops. 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 So and then the the sister who was who was chased into the forest by the sisters before being set upon by Sid wakes up and is now insane. She's been driven like if, on <laughs> on uh, the Wikipedia it says it made her sexually aggressive and delirious to describe <laughs> the transformation. So she had a little taste of the Sid. And it caused a thirst that could not be quenched. That could not be quenched. It's kind of like what happens in Goldfinger when Sean Connery rapes Pussy Galore. And she's like, ooh, now that you mentioned it, I'm all in, big boy. That's how the, that's, <laughs> look, that's just good science. That's just uh, good science. Until he runs screaming. <laughs> until he runs, exactly. Good, so old, she, good old Sean Connery. That's, that's the good old days where a good rape always turns into a love fest. <laughs> it always, right. You force the woman down into the hay and as she, until she tires from trying to fight you off. Yes. That, that's how it works in the good old days. Okay. Oh my Anywho. God. I, 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 I'm not uh, off topic. Please. Literally every uh, one of those crazy romances I read in high school always started that way. Captive Bride. It's all Captain like the Khaleesi. Bride. It's all like the Khaleesi in Game of Thrones. You just they just keep raping you till you like it. <laughs> she took a bit of convincing, as they say <laughs> in Bodies or not Bodies, but uh, Barbarian. Yeah, she took a bit of convincing. Uh, so she staggers down the stairs and tries to attack Sid and the gang and she falls in the pit. And this is the first time you see her fall down and you see uncle Leroy and aunt Fanny come out of the shadows and, and basically jump on her. So at that point we're, we're to think she gets eaten up. Don't you think? I believe so. I don't know what they're doing. Maybe they're making more spider babies. Maybe they're in a cannibalistic sex club. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Thankfully, they they kind of do all that off screen, so we don't really know what's happening. We an, it's, arm, it's hard uh, an arm doesn't like throw up or throw up show up later. I'm about to throw up. Um, <laughs> Okay, so then Lon Chaney blows up the building <laughs> and uh, the brother and the assistant escape. And that's the, so the end is they got married. The brother got the inheritance. They live fabulously well. Uh, we haven't had to worry about the, you know, the, the crazy disease that causes uh, our children to become <laughs> infantile psychotics. Uh, how, so we're fine because you know we're distant cousins. It's never affected our family. But then it cuts to their children playing with a spider in the in the front yard or something. Oh no! Blah, 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 blah. It's a sad situation. Well, sad situation. Uh, one of the comedy relief parts is uh, the assistant does not want to stay at the house. So they order the, the brother to drive her into town, but instead they go in, uh, to a bar and get drunk. And by the time they're done drinking, uh, all the hotels are closed in full. So then That's they go have to go back to the inn at Spider Bay. <laughs> yes, they were out boozing it out, painting the town red. And they're like, oh, damn, every hotel is closed. It's now well after two. So it's well we're having after a two. Old time. So they're, they're drunk as skunks driving their 8,000 pound solid steel car of the 60s uh, all Absolutely. over the road, as one did. As one did. 
Sweet Jesus. <laughs> Any other thoughts and feelings before we move on with our lives? That That's just how we thin the herd back in the day. Spider Baby. This movie is ridiculous and bonkers. Shall we go behind the scenes? Please do. Well, let's see. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Sex Scandal. Shot in 12 days in the August of 1964. Many days were extremely hot on the small stage with no air conditioning. Lon Chaney Jr. frequently had to be wiped down between every take on some days. Well, and he was a big drinker, so I, I'm sure he wasn't just uh, stopping during this time. That's correct. The rocking chair that Virginia the Spider Baby ties Peter to as <laughs> she plays her spider game was an antique that belonged to the director's grandmother. It was destroyed during filming. <laughs> okay, first of all, who wrote that little tidbit down for to share? Well, you know that you know that rocking chair over there. That was my great grandma. My great grandpa whittled that with the last stick uh, from this old house that he brought from Virginia. But we just threw it in the trash when we were done filming. We used it for kindling. Kindling. Uh, thought to be a lost film in the 1990s uh and then like there was one kind of bootleg copy that was like circulating but the director found the original negatives and they were able to kind of uh do a digital transfer clean it up and that no, no, looks good it was yeah. it didn't look like a funky version i've seen some funky version remember we had to watch a, a couple of movies on youtube that were I don't know what the hell. Somebody filmed it on Super 8 or recorded True. the soundtrack with an 8-track. I don't know. It was clean. Sid Haig. Sid Haig admitted to avoiding Lon Chaney Jr. because he was nervous about working with him. Uh, finally, they said, hey, Sid, go get Lon out of his trailer. He's probably drunk as a lord. No. <laughs> and they knocked on his door. He knocked on his door and he said, uh, Mr. Chaney, you're needed on set. And he's like, hey. You're Sid. I'm Lon. We're all just working actors here. I don't know what voice I'm doing. And they became Don Corleone. What is that? (laughs) That's exactly right. Um, This movie had many, many, many different titles, including The Liver Eaters, uh, Cannibal Orgy. The, the uh the title of the one we watched was called spider baby or the maddest story ever told so there you go i do Good love uh, the spider baby is the best it's much better than the liver eater since nobody was eating any livers they weren't there's no liver eating scenes in this movie who the hell knows that what's would, happening and then, and that's the movie the liver eaters and then uh Cut to French people eating foie gras. Oh, foie gras. Foie gras. Right. Liver and onions. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Wee oui, wee. Oui. The theme song was sung by Lon, Lon Chaney Jr. Fantastic. So there you go. And there's you a line that says that? <laughs> a couple extra cases of scotch, perhaps. Uh, and one of the lines from the song was This cannibal orgy is strange to behold and the maddest story ever told. So good times. I would say ridiculous would be better than maddest. Quinn K. Redeker, who played Peter, would sometimes sit in Lon Chaney Jr.'s trailer while Chaney told him stories and anecdotes about his films. Chaney would often be making his specialty homemade mustard while doing so. Is that a euphemism? I don't know what that means. Although it it does sound fascinating. I bet Lon Chaney would have had a thousand stories. Uh, the film had a $60,000 budget. Lon Chaney Jr. was paid a flat fee of $2,500 for his performance, while the other actors were paid $100 a day. So there you go. There you go. Uh, there's a scene where Ralph, played by Sid Haig, uh, is like scaling upside down the window to peek in at uh, the, the, the striptease act by the sister. He was tied around his feet with a rope 
And they had to do it quickly because Sid started to panic when he felt the pressure because he was upside down, the pressure behind his eyes from dangling upside down outside a window. So they're like, okay, film this quick. Ay, ay, ay. Good times. Uh, like I said, it was filmed in 1964, but not released till 1967 because the original uh, producers went bankrupt after they filmed it. So good times. Um, let's see. During the climax, as he's struggling with Mary, Sid had the flu and a temperature of 103 degrees. So while he's like ravaging her, he... He was he was spreading his his flu all over her. Evidently, Maybe they had that's doctors, what happened. They had doctors on set to give him an injection every few hours so he could continue to work of so cocaine. <laughs> exactly, of straight heroin. <laughs> um, let's see. The Smith Estate of Los Angeles, California, is used for the exteriors of the Mary House, and the house still stands today. So there you go. That Good is time. fascinating. Uh, let's see. Where is the Smith Estate, by the way? It's in the Highland Park neighborhood of Los Angeles. All right. So there you go. Um, I think that's it. We don't need to know all this good stuff. Should we talk about the cast? Please. Now, I was saying that we all recognize Sid Haig. We all recognize Lon Chaney Jr., there was yes. another actor that I recognized, but I couldn't figure out from where. The guy who plays Peter, Quinn K. Redeker. I'm like, who is he? Why does he look familiar? I went through his IMDb. and We figured out for years he was on The Young and the Restless. That's right. Playing Rick Sterling from I, 1987, I, I, 2004. I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Then I saw the picture. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> totally. <Yes>. Totally. <laughs> That was the crazy. I'm like, who is it? I mean, frankly, I always thought Rex Sterling looked like Peter Cetera from Chicago. So it could have just been that. Who's to say? Maybe so they replaced him. And it was a mysterious death and he was replaced by Pete Cetera. P we call him Pete Cetera. That's how we, we're, That's we're how we roll. Friends. Uh, let's see. Lon Chaney Jr., he played Bruno, the chauffeur and caregiver. You know him from The Wolfman, which was filmed in 1941. I stand yeah. corrected. He was also in High Noon in 1952 with uh, Gary Cooper. He was in Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman in 1943. Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein in 1948. He got a lot of mileage out of playing the Wolfman. He was doing a lot he of did. wolf stuff. He was very uh, wolfy. He was very wealthy. His real name is not Lon Chaney Jr., by the way. Do you know that? What's his real name? Uh, his real name, if I can find it here, uh, he was born Creighton. Creighton Chaney. Creighton? He became Creighton. He became Lon Chaney Jr. He wanted to be an actor, and he was trying to scoop in on the whole nepotism thing. Because mm -hmm. his father was obviously, he was the, his father was the man of a thousand faces. He had his own kind of like kit and would do his own makeup for all of those movies like The Phantom of the Opera, like you said, back in the silent picture era. Uh, let's see. Who else do you want to know? Sid Haig was uh, Ralph. <laughs> he was uh, House of a Thousand Corpses. He was the Devil's Rejects. He was, oh my goodness. He was in Diamonds Are Forever, the Sean Connery James Bond movie from 1971. Whoa. He was also in Kill Bill Volume 2. What? I just watched that again. Who was he? He was Jay. Does that do anything for you? Mm, I need a more descriptive description. Yeah, that doesn't get the job done. Do you want to no, know anybody else from the cast? Okay. Oh, he, the, 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 the messenger. The messenger. I kept looking at him. He was a huge star. He was a huge yes. star. He was in His, all. He was Birmingham Brown in all the Charlie Chan things. But here's the best trivia. When Shemp, when Shemp died, he was considered uh, a, a, a replacement. Now, oh, really? I didn't know that. Yes. So it says Columbia wanted to use one of the stock actors, but we know it's racism. Manton Moreland. Manton Moreland. Right. Has, to be, has to be racist, because I had seen him in a thousand things. But he, I mean, they, they talk about... 
that monogram pictures that did the Charlie Chan, most yeah. of these studios didn't give black actors high rating. But in in for monogram, they loved him so much that he actually got a high a higher building, a high billing. Cause he didn't really get to do much in this movie. No. He came, and he yeah. died like in seventy three, so he he didn't live much longer than that. But he's famous for having the these bug eyes. He did yes. a lot of black films, but absolutely his biggest thing was the Charlie Chan series. But I love the little Three Stooges thing. That would have been very interesting. But they're like that would have been huge. Uh, we want to use one of our stock actors. Really, we know that's not really the reason. Racism. It no has to be. It has to be. Father of Marcella Moreland. I don't know who that yep. is. She was a child actress. Okay. Um. Any anybody else you want to know about the cast? You want to know about Emily or Elizabeth or Virginia? What What about the Anne? naked lady? Uh. Okay. That was uh Emily. Is that the one? Yes. Emily was the sister who does the <laughs> exotic striptease. Most famously, you know her as Annabelle from the House on Haunted Hill with Vincent Price oh, okay. in 1959. Uh, the Scarlet Hour in 56, Born Reckless in 58. She played the Countess in a 1965 episode of Get Smart. There you go. They thought she was going to be like Mamie Van Doren or somebody, but her career took a dark turn. So I'm afraid, you know, you know what else is taking a dark turn? Some of the names of these black uh, films. <laughs> Biscuit <laughs> Eater, The Watermelon Man, all kinds of very uh, inappropriate, <laughs> to say the least. Good old 1940s. Uh, good times. OK, uh, let me talk about the director. Director, writer was Jack Hill. You know him from Spider Baby. He wrote Coffee and Foxy Brown. Ooh. Uh, yes. Uh, the Jezebels. We did a lot of black exploitation movies. Well, that's probably where uh, we met our friend because he, he was huge in all the, the black films. Not Absolutely. like the Foxy Brown kind of stuff, but a lot of the black <laughs> films in the 40s. He did The Big Bird Cage. Isle of the Snake People. He did uh, the Swinging Cheerleaders. <laughs> oh goodness gracious! Death Ship. Sorth. So he had a long and distinguished. He paid career. his bills. Paid his bills. Hey, you do what you got to do. Shall we talk about the ratings? Yes, uh, please. Spider Baby currently sits at. 94% fresh. See, I knew. Reviews. Do you know what the audience gave it? A sep, uh, 64. 76. I almost said 76. 76. Nah. Ah, I hate it when I'm wrong. Um, It happens from time to time. Uh, top I critics. Be, I will not be giving it a 94, just FYI. Okay, good to know. Uh, Michael Wilmington of the Chicago Tribune says Spider Baby is one of those lurid, macabre, amusingly exaggerated B-horror movies beloved by the psychotronic Joe Bob Briggs crowd. 2.5 out of 4. Rotten. Very <laughs> That's sad. pretty rotten. Uh, Mark Savlov of the Austin Chronicle. Simultaneously creepy and hilarious, this is the perfect slice of Grand Gwyn Wall for the humid summer nights. Three out of five. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a... a I love that. Like, it is magnificent. There is not a work in this genre that it can compare to. 2.5 out of five. <laughs> <laughs> what is your rating? Um, I am going to, I enjoyed it. I, I find it, I found it creepy yet, um, uh, amusing. And so it's just bizarre. I hope they had fun filming it. That's all I can say. But I, I'm thinking it's desperate people in a sweaty environment, making a hundred dollars a day, but, uh, I'm going to give it three. 
point seven five uh Sid Hag's dirty business out of five. I'm kind of torn because this is not something I need to watch again, honestly. Um I might but make it, someone else watch it though. It I was, might it watch was it mild, again. It was mildly captivating. So I don't know how to how to review this. I mean, I, I guess I'll say three out of five crazy cannibals with weird weird stuff glued on their faces when they come out of the the pit right <laughs> we didn't even talk about that it was like what are you doing these, these... it's, it's, it's the it's just uh the Habsburgs all over it again it was ridiculous They're, it's a sign of royalty it's look it will keep your interest um and it has moments that I thought were were good but overall, I can't, I can't really recommend it. That's all I'm, I'm saying. I'm waiting like to see this. I yeah, I'm waiting to see this musical at community theater. It'll be fantastic. We didn't even talk about that. There was a musical that what? started in 2007 out of Bakersfield. For goodness sake, out of your backyard. You should know all about it. Oh, my God. I wonder if it's the same group that did Night of the Living Dead. Remember when I Wouldn't told you that? They just kept changing the ending. Now, what if they hadn't gone in the basement? What would have happened? What if the black guy ha- had lived and the other guy got shot? They went through like five different scenarios of, of what the ending would be. At what point is, is the audience just leaving? When they're like, we're going to redo half the show. What about this now? It's like, we're out of here. Not keep, to be a hater keep, keep the five bucks. theater. The majority of the people in the audience were clearly uh, friends and family. Homeless. so thank you i have to google that i have to know because we have three different community theaters in our small town oh i believe it ain't no lie (laughs) so thank you very much go to our page on twitter at the podcast tw die go to our page on facebook at the podcast that wouldn't die aaron are we on instagram and tiktok indeedly do in fact i just updated it today we are on the Ticker Talker, and I'm just going to say we're on the Ticker Talker, and we are on the Insta, and it is called, okay, brace yourself, the podcast that wouldn't die. Dynamite! You can also email us, the podcast that wouldn't die at Gmail. Gmail. We are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere the finer podcasts are available, so don't forget to like rate review and share spread the word why don't you and don't forget to why subscribe don't you? for goodness sake aaron do you have your personal uh social media presence you want to share in deedly do i do and just in time for the holidays go to the cult of aaron join the cult and uh pick out a few pictures you may then send me a direct message and we will exchange money and you then can own a piece of my art. I'm on Instagram. I am the Cult of Aaron. I am on Instagram. I am Don't Feed the Pigeon. My art is on Artsy, Aaron Doherty, and First Dibs, Aaron Doherty. There you go. Her first and last name. So look in your phone book. People have phone books anymore. <laughs> yes. Give her a call. Find her I address. was in the phone booth the other day because I needed to make a phone call. So I had my dime. But first I went through the phone book. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sweet Jesus. Next week, we'll be doing the classic Stephen King film, Dr. Sleep, starring Ewan McGregor and others. Who else is in that? And all the rest. And all the rest. It is available on HBO Max and other places. So check that out. Send us any comments, questions, favorite scenes, favorite quotes, and maybe, just maybe, maybe, we'll talk about it on the show. So thank you very much and be well. Bye, babies. Take care. Don't kill each other. Bye, spider babies. Don't kill anyone on Christmas. Makes for a bad Christmas. It's bad karma for the new year. (laughs) 